Yes, finally, after a long day of work, uh, my long-awaited, not just installing of my M.2 device, which I put in my super server last night, but putting something on there like Windows 10 and recording the process of setting up the BIOS for boot from NVMe, like this device, which is NVMe um, type. It's not SATA, it's fast, is the point. Now, I just powered on the machine here and I don't want you to miss anything. I've got the out of band, you know, ability to show you video of the machine because it's a super micro with I KVM. I hit delete key to get in the uh, setup and there we go. Now over in the right, I have these detailed directions that wired zone follows to assemble a super server workstation, for example. And in those directions is the BIOS configuration for a proper Windows 10 install where you might someday want to clone to a C drive that's even bigger than two terabytes. So this bias configuration I'm about to do is going to cover you in that kind of circumstance as well. Now, quick little, quick little tip, if you've never uh, or haven't recently used your a super micro with IPMI, they call it IKVM for this web UI. There you go. The blurriness went away. We have a crystal clear screen now. Another tip would be the uh, bias level. So this article mentions you want to be at 10B. Uh, I was told by support that the bootability for M.2 or NVMe uh, comes along with this bias level. Now I'm going to be the judge of that. There are some settings in here. So I'm going to go back to restore optimized defaults, say yes, save those changes and reset. I want to show you a factory default BIOS. Now let me explain uh, what I'm talking about as far as settings in the BIOS. The pieces here um, are very basic. Basically things like numlock, which will annoy the heck out of you because your uh, keyboard will get reversed in the middle of typing something. Uh, if you have your super micro set to have numlock, on by default. We're going to turn that off. So, so there's some little cosmetic stuff, but very little to do because VMware is uh, all the settings for Hyper, Hyper-V or VMware for virtualization in general are all good to go in this BIOS. So that's cool. Um, but particularly NVMe, I don't find is very well documented. So let's have a look here. If we go to the uh, order page, we go to the user's manual. It takes a little while to bring it up from Supermicro site. I'll have a look for the word NVMe, but on the left here, I get my mouse in that window and hit the delete key to get into setup again. Okay, we're back in setup. And on the right, I can hit control F, look for NVMe. So it talks about physical header. That's it. All right, how about M.2? A little more discussion there, talking about the socket. And if it's a SATA device you have in there that uses the HCI protocol, like the uh, Samsung SM951 that I already had in there, well, yeah, it's shared. But in this case, it's an MVME device. I now have six SATA devices I can attach, plus the seventh, this M.2 slot, and eighth, the PCI slot. So I can have eight storage devices in the server. Let's keep looking for M.2 hits here. All right, it hints a little bit about what's in Northbridge. And shows a picture of it. And where it physically is in the motherboard. That's about it. It doesn't tell you about bootability for Windows 10. So I want to make sure I cover that in detail here. Here we go. Uh, the directions or bias, I'm going to just follow along. We've already figured that, finished that section off, and we're not installing Windows quite yet. Boot, configure, control the leap. Okay, we already got the bias in there. How about boot feature? So I'm going to go to advanced, boot feature, and I would like the power button to have to be held down for four seconds. 
And I would like to stay off when I re-plug in the server to wall power. All right. Now I managed to skip step two. Sorry about that. Do not want to forget to turn off numlock. Okay, so we've got those steps done. Now I'm ready to hit escape. Step five. Down arrow. To SATA configuration. And notice configure HDA is on by default, not RAID, so that's all fine. But for the drive, we want to say hard drive to change to solid state. Well, guess what? It's not going to show here because these are all SATA devices. So if you're talking SATA disks, great, but I don't have any installed at all. Uh, well, wait a minute. Okay. That surprised me a little bit. Um, it had been a couple months since I really played around with my SM951. So, hmm, it does show here, but it's certainly not SATA, and it's not SATA speeds. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to solid state. It's the only drive physically installed in the server. So we're done with that. What's next? BCIE and VGA uh, on board or off board. Now, I don't want to go outbound, outboard for an added um, GPU because I don't have one installed right now. So we'll leave it on on board for this video. Let's move along. All right, I'm going to give you a sneak peek here. Windows is going to install just fine. But here's the thing, the M.2 won't boot um, it'll install, and then it goes to reboot, and then it won't successfully find itself. It won't, won't find Windows 10. So I'm just going to say EFI for these two settings. Let me show you this one. I'm not changing. I'm going to leave it alone. Here it is. So it makes sense. It's saying use EFI for the SEM.2. All right, next. I'm going to hit escape, escape, right arrow over to boot, and change this to UEFI. Very important right there. Okay, now right arrow, save changes, and exit. Now, I didn't touch anything about the boot order. There's no boot targets with any kind of OS other than a USB 3 key with Windows 10 on there. I used the Microsoft Windows 10 utility to create that USB key. I didn't actually bother with Rufus this time. I just used Microsoft's built-in executable that downloads the ISO file or changes the USB key into a bootable Windows 10 install media. Okay, so here we go. On the left side, I'll point out Samsung SSD 950 Pro 512 GB showing right there. Pretty cool. All right. So I, again, I did not change the boot order, but I did change the BIOS type. And again, I'm trying to be ready for a, you know, two terabyte plus future. And uh, I also find uh, dual booting with Windows 10 versus ESXi 6 works out just swell with UEFI mode turned on. It also makes the boot target menu simpler as well. So you've got this 50 second or so delay of the super micro bias. We just have to wait that out. That's going to skew a little. This is a more of a server product compared to say a workstation or laptop where your bias is, you know, two, three seconds. And then uh, what you will see is something like eight to 10 seconds, I think on the uh, Intel 750 to boot Windows 10. Um, we'll see if it's even slightly faster. It gets a little hard to time Windows 10 boot when it's that insanely fast. Okay, so I'm not going to hit any keys. It's going to struggle to find any boot targets other than the USB 3 that's plugged into the back of the server. That's where the blue sockets, USB 3 ports are on a Supermicro Super Server 5.0.2.AD-TN4T server. 
Okay, we see the Windows E looking logo. That hints that it's booting the Windows installer. The Windows spinning thing was a little um, flaw in the IPMI firmware where you can kind of kind of overlaps a bit. All right, we're actually done with the bias, right? So let's keep this up front and center and actually move it up because the resolution is going to jump and get bigger soon enough. All right, here we go. Hit next. Install. All right, we're going to skip licensing. Accept the license term. Custom, of course. And there we go. That's the Samsung 950 Pro the first time I'm taking a look at it. Simply hit next. Now, I really want you to uh, see that I'll speed up the clock on the uh, you know Camtasia video here, and that's fine. But I want you to be able to uh, see how much real time has elapsed for this install. So here we go. Okay, in a little under 10 minutes, it was ready. Now this Samsung Magician and uh, there's actually a driver for the 950 for Windows are still to come. So it's not real surprising if our speed was not, you know, uh, amazing yet. I guess I could have centered that after all. I thought we'd get a higher resolution already. So I'm going to do uh, no product key. Use Express settings. I have no network connection right now. I have unplugged. So what that means is we won't be getting any device manager changes or auto updates. I just want to see how the built-in Windows driver does first with a quick ATTO disk bench or add whatever you want to call it. Should have left that running. Oh, well. Think we'll have ourselves an OS rather soon. All right, this is exciting. Um, I have a feeling the first result's gonna be slow, but I stuck a second USB key in. So we got the uh, Windows install, and then we got the thing I just stuck in there. So let's see what we get. Okay, not too shabby. Now, partly because we have PCIe by four lanes, and it's PCIe 3.0, uh, that's why we're able to get these speeds. And this is a 2280 card we've stuck in there, the storage. Now, I'm going to go ahead and Type update. Go to Windows Update Settings. Advanced. That's done. So what do we want to do here? Well, I'm going to pause the video momentarily while I go and pop out both USB keys they are no longer needed and stick in the ethernet, which is needed.
and 10 gig drivers are not installed right now, obviously. Before I step away, let me just get the clock accurate. So that's going to, uh, that'll be setting itself as soon as we add the ethernet cable. So there we go. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to say yes to this question. So I only plugged in one cable. It'll be very clear who's got the network going in. I can disable the unused one gigabit interface at this point. So now we have ourselves a quick look at device manager before there's a chance for anything to happen. As far as auto updates, for instance, specifically storage. And there it is. So it's an old driver. It's fine. Let's fix it. So a couple things to do. Uh, Windows 10. Uh, got some downloads to do. Right here, this chipset driver is going to get rid of all the ugliness in Device Manager in one fell swoop. And notice our clock is good now. All right, we open that up and turn on file name extensions. Okay, helps if I extract it first. All right, now we're ready to do that. Close all these confusing and cluttered windows, and let's get ourselves a nice clean device manager. To reduce confusion for the rest of this video, I'm also going to allow remote assistance. So we'll do an RDP desktop full screen and restart. Okay, I'm back. USB keys are popped out. Ethernet's still in. And device manager should now be clean. Just like I said it would be. Now, Ethernet, a little different story. Windows updates, last time I checked, doesn't automatically handle that. So, let's see if that's still true here in November. That is correct. Okay, so the 10 gig driver is right here. And I'm gonna want those because I'm gonna be doing some speed testing of these M2 devices uh, between two identical servers. So that's the real real fun it's all fun but that's the real fun <laughs> all right so it's as simple to get myself what i need browse manually paste in that path i already typed and uh that's it not so hard next one All right, got ourselves a clean server and all the interfaces. Now, I just plugged a CAT6A cable in between the two 10 gig interfaces for interconnect inside itself. And the, uh, 
they're of course going to try to do DCP or something like that and then fail, but that's fine. Okay, so we're done there. Let's um, see if Device Manager still has old NVMe, and the answer is highly likely to be yes. I've never seen that update itself yet. Maybe someday I'll be wrong. Uh, and Microsoft will do something about this and just have Samsung on there, but no, they do not. Well, we we already saw the ATTO dispatch results. They're okay, but you know, not incredible or anything. So let's do it, the download. So if you do Samsung Magician download, well, frankly, you're probably in Google. So let's just do that. Oh yeah, I promised you I was going to go to RDP. Okay, and the other thing I should probably do is do NetPL Whiz, so it stops uh, nagging me for password after a reboot. Just little home lab tips sprinkling in here. There we go. Okay, that makes reboots nice and easy. And you, it makes you something you can use with a stopwatch and kind of watch it get to the desktop quick, quickly. All right. So here's our Windows 10. Windows updates might or might not. Might not be doing its thing. I'm not really uh, sure. We could look at Task Manager to help figure that out. The answer seems to be no. Things are pretty mellow at the moment. So I'm ready for this. Showing you that there it is, the 950. Holy smokes. So we have a driver to install. We have an install guide. Let's see what the install guide says. download it, next, next, and reboot, and we'll have ourselves a Samsung branded NVMe. So that seems pretty straightforward to me. So let's get that download cranking. And wow, Edge Browser just starts downloading. Wow, interesting behavior. Okay, now Samsung Magician, I'm going to want that too. And we're up to version 4.8. Why am I going to want that? Well, I want to show you the SSD and let's see the tool in action. So first, I'm going to do Samsung Magician. Then I'll do the NVMe driver. I'm doing that in that order because I'm kind of curious if the Magician will, I don't know, maybe he'll handle that or tell me something. Okay, was that download still happening? Uh, no, it's just taking a while. There we go. So here comes Samsung Magician. I'll speed up this part of the video. User access control popped up. All right, the driver's provided by Microsoft. Is that a clickable link? Does that do anything? Nope, so it doesn't offer to fix our driver for us. All right, very few terabytes have been written. Uh, brand new, you're watching the very first time I've ever used the drive. And uh, you'll notice right in the front page, got a run button. And we can do a little bit of performance testing with the Microsoft device driver installed. This will again be an extra before and after kind of data point.
All right. How about firmware up? Well, let me just go down the list. Benchmark we just did. That'll be kept in the history. Performance optimization. Can't do that still. Can't believe they haven't fixed that. And I have the latest firmware. There's nothing to install here. We'll leave this alone. We're booted from this drive, so that wouldn't be such a good idea, even if you could do it. And rapid mode, I can't really think of why I'd want to turn that on for this. Not supported. All right. And we could enable security, and it should do encryption and shouldn't slow us down, but I'm not going to do that now. All right, so we still need ourselves a new driver, right? Just double check one more time. Leave that open. Standard, not Samsung branded. So now it's time for the driver install. User access control say yes. And let's watch it touch that driver. So kind of make a nice before and after screenshot. Okay, there's the old 2006. Kind of a strange, ridiculously old date. I do want to leave that up, don't I? Okay, nothing happens until you restart anyway. So it's an extremely quick install. And now we're facing another reboot. Because it's a remote desktop connection, we're obviously about to lose that connection. And now, isn't that cool? Came right back to IKVM view. So we didn't really lose the connection like you normally would. I love that. Didn't have to do anything. And I'm still recording the video. Whoa, I didn't even have time to reach the uh, stopwatch. That was cool. Um, here, let's get this small. This is crazy. Well, I wish I did that earlier. Okay, device manager is where we want to go. Because I'm eager to see this. Cool. All right, let's see what happens if I click uh, Update Driver just for grins. Nothing. That's good. Enough dilly-dallying. Let's fire this up. And cross our fingers that we get better speed. I'm sure we will. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. Uh, let's have a comparison look. All right, got the new test on the left. I did not mean to do that. Oh, it does not, there we go. And did not mean to do that either, there we go. <laughs> what do we have here? We have a new speed champion in almost every way. The 750 is beating it at the big numbers. Four point oh, that's where things matter on the feel. And that's where this one trounces all the other ones. So this looks very good. Let me uh, maybe get this in a kind of ascending order of uh, amazingness. So I'm liking this. <laughs> I think uh, what's next is probably going to be, well, exercising the 10 gig just a little bit. And then I'll probably call it a wrap on this particularly uh, long video and get it out there to you. Can't resist uh, just grabbing a quick screenshot of this. And uh, I think I'll need to be tweeting that out. It's pretty cool. I've had so much fun the last month testing all this good storage.
Now, there are other benchmarks too, like Crystal uh, to run. Uh, you know what? I want to change our power profile. And say when we're plugged in. Okay, so we are in high performance, so that's good. All right, so I don't see any limitations there, and I was on full speed already. So I'm not worried about the power plan holding me back. Um, before I get into other benchmarks, I think rebooting was awfully fun <laughs> and incredibly fast. So let's do a little more of that, okay? Okay, so we got ATTO shut off. I'm ready to do a reboot. And the only thing that makes any sense to time is after the BIOS is done, the post UEFI. And B2 in the bottom right. Boom. Okay, so when I started seeing video swirling in the middle, that's when I hit start. I don't know how accurate an indicator that is, but uh, that's what I got. Boom. 10 seconds. Not too shabby. Okay, so I've run all three, but I've not run Windows Update. Just in case Windows Update has some sort of effect, I'm going to go ahead and kick that off now, and I'll do another run of all three of these afterward. Well, Windows 10, Windows Update is giving me fits tonight. So I'm going to need to give that up, because it is just not finishing those. Oh, the disk is now doing something. So maybe I'm wrong, and we can look at the disk and get a better peek at who is beating on the disc right now. Well, this would not be a good time to run a disc bench. Um, what I really want to do is turn off the C states in the processor, just in case we have a little uptick in performance. And basically on this super micro manual here, we're going to go into C state control. Where is that? It's going to be under CPU configuration, of course. Anyhow, it's getting late, and I'm not going to worry too much about Windows updates anymore. In fact, when I do the next speed run, I'm going to make sure that the Ethernet is completely disabled again. Oh, yeah. There's your shutdown command and a remote desktop connection. You can hit control alt end, bring up task manager, we still won't be able to restart. So just a handy little tip. If you're in an RDP session, you can just do that. All right, so I'm gonna go in the BIOS and we'll see if changing the C state has any effect on anything at all. There it is, advanced. Uh, 
Um, CPU state control. Disable for benchmarking. This is a good idea for normal operations. Not so much. That's all I'm going to change. Okay. I'll resume the video when there's a an operating system booted to show you. Um, by the way, 0.78 gigahertz is what it would have shown when idle, and then boosted all the way up to turbo of 2.4. This is an octa-core Xeon, so each core gets more work done with less clock cycles. But when you have eight cores and you're trying to work within a thermal envelope of uh, 45 watts, is it? Um, or watt envelope, um, power envelope. Well, that's what you get for gigahertz. And uh, it's still quite a powerful processor compared to most Core i7s because they tend to be four cores. So for a virtualization box, having octa-core, eight physical cores, or with hyper-threading, 16 cores, is a pretty awesome thing. All right, so I'll uh, resume video when I have this thing booted and remote desktop restored. So I disabled the 10 gig interfaces. Now I'm going to disable the one gig as well. There's no internet now. There's no network at all. What we want to do is a couple things. CPU, we look at gigahertz. So even though we disabled C states, I'm still seeing it's obviously not a 2.4. So that's a little bit odd. I might have more homework to do there and messing with C states in this machine. Let's try an old trick here. <laughs> it worked. Cool. All right, so now we have a reasonable uh, view of our entire Windows desktop at a decent resolution. As soon as that CPU settles down, I'll be ready to run all three benchmarks, again, with C states disabled. I also found it interesting that I thought balanced is the power profile you usually get. Let's double check after this reboot. Whoa. Little uh, numlock. There we go. We are unbalanced. Hmm. Earlier, we looked here, and I could swear it was on performance. All right. Again, <laughs> in the interest of time, oh boy, I'm going to have to look back at that video, but I sure thought it said high performance. I'm in high performance now. C states are disabled. So we're now giving it our best shot. All right, I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to see if it uh, finishes in a reasonable time. Taking a little break here. All right, the indexing stopped a few minutes later. So it needed like 10 or 15 minutes of heavy IO. It was done. Then Windows Update worked just fine. And now it's applying those updates. So I should be able to run with C states off. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Soon, I hope. Because it's 1045. <laughs> Thankfully, Windows Update finished. As uh, I mentioned before, uh, I wanted the CPU and disk to all look normal. So the disk doing nothing. And the CPU a little higher than the 0.78 gigahertz I see when C states are on. And I guess that happened, um, but we're not really seeing different results. Now you'll see in the bottom right, there's just one more benchmark to run, and then I'll show you the screenshot of the prior test results. How about if we go big? And minimize. So that's going to be hard to toggle. 2515. Yeah, all the results are the same, basically. So changing the C state setting, the particular setting I did in the BIOS didn't seem to make a difference. All right, well, this video is ginormous. There's a lot of editing to do. I'm about to uh, call it a night, but I do want to thank you very much for visiting tinkertry.com, where there'll be a whole lot more about this Samsung that you're looking at, that we just looked at together tonight especially when we cluster two together and get M.2 speeds going with over the 10 gig interface. So it should be fun. So thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.